Welcome back to another episode of Battle Talks Podcast. This week, we got the legendary, legendary Derek Worsley up here. What's going on, man? You know, tall bro, so I got to get you on. What's up, man? Hey, look, man, I appreciate you having me on, man. Uh, it, it, it's, it's a blessing and an honor to be able to um, participate in what you got going on, my brother. Um, hey, man, so, so you know, I'm, first of all, I just want to say um, I'm proud of what you're doing, man. I'm proud of what you – I keep my eyes on a lot of y'all, man, and I'm <laughs> very proud of the things you're doing, man. You know, blessings on that. Yeah, I appreciate it, man. I try to keep myself busy, productive, you know what I mean, and, you know, just – Back home, man, you know how it is back there. So I just, you know, put that foot forward down now to, to what I got going on and trying to give them back to the to the young boys that's coming up behind us and kids, you know what I mean, that next generation. So, you know, they don't do some of the stuff yeah. we did. True, true, because you're becoming old here now, right? Yeah, man, I'm 30, <laughs> hit, hit 30 this year, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah. The big 30, yeah. so yeah. yeah. But yeah, I, I, I hear the young boys calling me OG now. So I'm like, dang, yeah. I'm at their yeah. level. <laughs> Yeah, I wonder what I am, man. It's the triple OG. Man, you know, they start, they start early this year. That's all that, nowadays. That's all it is. You know, they start okay. real early. Um, but yeah, man, so we'll get into a little bit. Uh, you know, like I said, I know you from Tarboro, and people might not know that, but, you know, kind of get into that and, and kind of how your upbringing was with your family and surroundings for you. So we'll kick it off with that. Yeah, man. So, um, you know, I'm from the crib, man, from the bucket. You know, yep, we call yep. it a bucket because it's, it's hard to get up out of that bucket, man. You know, like the mop. You know what I'm saying? So I grew up in, you know, Princeville, East Tarboro, you know, mostly on Beasley Street. But, you know, me too, I was also a, a military brat. So I'm not the norm, man. I traveled a lot when I was younger. And then it came to a point where I stayed in Tarboro um, to finish high school and stuff like that. Went to Tarboro High. Of course, I'm a Viking. You yeah. know how that is, Viking yeah, pride. Yes, you know yes, what I'm sir, saying? Yes, sir. But, yeah, so um, – that's how I was raised, man. I was just raised, you know, humbly. You know how we are from the tarp, from, from the bucket, you know. Um, I'll tell you this, man, and some of the things I learned, I ran across a lot of people, believe it or not, ran across a lot of people from that area, man. And it's just something unique about us when we are away from that area and how we influence and our upbringing, our parents and our grandparents, you know, how they brought us up. It keeps us humble. You know, so um, I'm, I'm blessed, man, and, and, and I rep Tarboro all day long. You know, people tell you that mm -hmm. Captain Tarboro right there. You know what yeah. I'm saying? Yeah, Regardless yeah. of what I do and where I go, man. Yeah, no, that's a big thing. That's how I am. Like, I, I always talk about a story. When I first got to college at Winston, man, I was like, people are like, where are you from? I'm like, Tarboro. They're like, what? What is that? You know what I mean? They from Jersey, yeah. you know, D.C. or yeah. whatever. But in my, in my mind, I'm like. Go, go look it up. You know what I mean? Like, go you, you know, I, I give you some information about it, but go look it up for yourself. You know what I mean? So, nah, I'm the same way, bro. Wherever I'm at, I'm, I'm tall, bro, 252. You know what I mean? And the Princeville, I got family on that side of the bridge. So, you know, I'm always showing love to everybody over there. So you know how it is. Families on both Absolutely, sides. Man. But, um, yeah, I saw you was, uh, actually, that was something I learned, just kind of do some research on you that you was in the military. I didn't know you did a stint over yeah. in like, Afghanistan, Iran, too. Yeah, man, uh, I did 20, what, 22 years in the military. Yeah, I didn't I watched y'all boys play football in Korea. You know what uh, I'm saying? Y'all okay. rude boys was tearing up the field. Yeah. You know, came, I, I wanted to be home to support, man. And, you know, but times I could come home, you know, my cousin, Jemias, mm -hmm. you know, j yeah. you know what I'm saying? So I was always, you know, around, keeping an eye on y'all, man. You know, y'all brought a lot. Believe it or not, I'm going to flip it and talk about you a little bit now. Y'all brought a lot <laughs> to the city, man, a lot of pride that we needed at that time with that football team, man. So I, I, my hat's off to you again, you and all the rest of the boys that played football during that era, man. Um, of course, we could challenge who's the best class of football oh, yeah, of players course. in Tarboro, <laughs> you know. Um, but, yeah, I did uh, do time in military, Afghanistan, Afga uh, Iraq. You know, I've been a lot of places, man. So, um, yeah, um, that's that's kind of my, my, my um, the foundation of, what started my career, man. Cause when I went into the military, I didn't, I went in and do three years and, 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 and get out, yeah. you know? And um, one of the reasons a lot of people don't know it, I'm gonna give it to you first. Okay. The only person to know this are my two uncles. Um, I was at a point, man, I grew up with, you know, one of my best friends, D'Angelo Bridges, Von Quayle, you know, Pittman. Yep, we had yep. like this little crew, man. We was running tight in Tarboro. Those boys went to college. Mm -hmm. I, I left college, man. I came back. I was working in Gardner's. I don't know if you're familiar with Gardner's, mm -hmm. KFC. Yep. And I was starting to be a knucklehead, man. And the recruiter, <laughs> funny thing about it, when the recruiter hit me up, 
I was like, nah, dude, I'm good. I'm going to college. You know what I'm saying? It got to a point, man. I was at a low point, man, in life. I was sitting in the back of my uncle's car. I had a warrant out for my arrest. And I was starting to get in trouble in Tarboro like everybody mm-hmm. else do, man. Mm-hmm. And then um, my uncle had talked to me. He was like, man, you, you got a high school diploma. You got some college. You just sitting back here ruining your life. Man, I was sitting in the backseat. Hey, pick me up from jail. You know what I'm saying? And I was yeah. like, man, you know what? I'm out. And I went to the recruiter, man. I ain't looked back at Tarboro <laughs> or anything ever yeah. since. I, you know, from a from that perspective, I haven't looked back. Yeah. You know, yeah. and so, you know, going through the military taught me a lot, taught me how it grew me up as a man, it gave me a family, you know, and then it started me into that career path where it was full circle for me because I grew up dancing and stuff. You know, you ask anybody about Austin Twos and Tarver, they'll tell you who we are, okay. <laughs> right? So we grew up dancing, me and my younger brother. And, and so um, full circle come around, I get approached by an, an agent, um, believe it or not, Christian shopping. And so long story short is uh, went to an, an, uh, an interview, did a couple of pho- photo headshots and, um, and Tyler Perry was interested, Nashville, ABC Nashville was in- interested at the time. My cousin, Melvin Kearney was on, uh, was on the set of Nashville playing Bo. Um, and and um, a couple other pilots, USAA, I mean, straight mainstream instantly, right? Yeah, so I'm yeah. like, wow, what what is going on? Like, what's how this happened? You know, and so um, the military definitely is one of the most, most influ- influential things I've ever done in my life, you know? So, you know, I'm very proud to have served and protect this country. Um, and, and go through the experiences because that's what made who I am today. Yeah, man, that's a lot of respect. And, and, and I appreciate you for, you know, your service. Um, just seeing some of my friends and like people I know, family that's been through the military, like they all kind of get that same, you know, if you know them, it's like a discipline, you know what I mean? They, they, they might right. do what they do, but in the yeah. day, it's, it's going to be some responsibilities. It's going to be some discipline. It's going to be, you know what I mean? Absolutely. That's just, that's just how they are, you know? And, um, yeah. that camaraderie, you know, a lot of that too, is it, from that to, uh, Markel Petaway, uh, my best friend. I just met okay. him a couple of days ago, and uh, he's in the Navy now. Um, mm-hmm. Just came back home from doing like two, three years on the water. Uh, okay. He was in Korea too, actually South Korea for a little while. Um, but just saying, that's how he was just saying, like, man, it's, it's coming from it's for him, like you know, coming from athletics to to the military, it's some of the right. same type of you know mindset wise. You know what I mean? Not physically as much, but mindset wise is is discipline, teamwork, you know, leadership, yeah. you know, service, commitment, like all those, you know, right. key phrases and words we hear all the time, but really putting them into action. So, you know, like I said, I, I definitely respect all of y'all for doing that. And, and I considered it at one point in time and and I'll get this since, since, you know, like you said, you gave me something. So I actually took the practice as that um, right out of college. Uh, you know, I had my degree, football and kind of pan out for me. So I'm like, man, I'm going to just give me like a state department job, like work like DC doing, you know, IT, something like that. I'm going to just sit back and just retire. You know what I mean? Like this, this will be right. cake. You know what I mean? Once I get in. Right. So, you know, I go through the process and I was like, you, the guy kept calling me, blowing me up, recruiter. Like, man, what you want to do? I'm like, man, I ain't going to do it. And then right around that time, I ended up getting a job. Uh, thanks to some of like teachers back home, um, superintendent, you know, like just having a good name back home. They helped me uh, get a role doing, you know, starting my career out of IT. So I did that for okay. less, less than a year. And then I moved to Raleigh. And like you said, I ain't looked back since. You know, I came yeah. up here. Sure. And I, you know, even though it's not far, but it's it's, it's worlds of different. It's, it's you know different. what I'm saying? It's different. <laughs> completely. Yeah, it's different. <laughs> you know, it's completely different. But, um, yeah, no, I, I definitely, um, you know, take advantage of the opportunities I had here and, and kind of, you know, kind of let the guys know, like, man, listen, it's, it's life outside of that. Like you said, the humble beginnings a lot of times. We don't have much, you know, starting out in that town. And uh, you know what I mean? Once you get a chance to get out, you see like all the opportunities you have, so right. much world to see, bro. I, I like like right. I said, traveling, like with COVID, everything, I hate it. But bro, when I get a chance, I'm traveling, man. It felt like I'm like, man, I went to Dubai a couple years yeah. ago, bro. I'm just sitting there like, man, I made wow. out of East Tarver, bro. I'm in Dubai. You know what I <laughs> mean? It's crazy. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? To yeah. see that. Crazy. It's it's crazy, yeah. man. But um, you know, it's definitely a blessing to be in the position we in. Um, but yeah, so I'm getting back into some of the shows you mentioned before too. So, you know, you've been in Nashville, one of my mom's favorite have and have nots. Um, yeah. Uh, 
Uh, you taking three. Um, yeah. You there. Uh, survivor's remorse. You know, mm-hmm. I, I say you kind of you've been all over the place. You know what I'm saying? So how yeah. what, what's kind of been your your niche in that space? Like, you know, um, I see you play a lot of officer roles type, you know, that type yeah. of position. So how, how is that, you know, come about for you? It's a funny story, man. Um, I would always get my agent would always put me in for these jobs. Right. Because I had military background. So I had the persona, the look, gotcha. the feel and, and everything that I brought to set, man. And, and so a lot of times. Honestly, I'm like, I get cast for this role, right? And I would end up being a consultant for the for the production, right? Mm. And so um, I don't know if it was a call in then, you know, I do the job, but then it, it'd be like, the producer be like, hey, you know, um, you know, like for example, I'll give you a prime example. Um, Melvin Kearney, my, my, my cousin from Tarboro, me and him are in Nashville. I walk on set, Melvin's like, what in the heck? <laughs> Yo, we're cousins, and Hayden and all this, you know, print all the all the everybody's like, y'all y'all cousins, or y'all just know each other? No, we're like blood cousins. Like this is my family. <laughs> right, right. And me, he and I are on set doing this doing a scene together. You know, he and I are doing a scene together. The Cali Corey war winning producer pulls me to the side, like, man, can you keep helping us be, you know, consult as far as like. So again, I get put behind the scenes, yep. you know, having to have nots. I'm playing a cop, working with Tyler Perry. Uh, he's 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 directing. Hey, what do you know? You in the military? Can you help us direct this scene? And yeah. I'm so long story short, man. Where I, I will always end up in front of the camera, but um, I would end up behind the camera. And I never forget on the set of ABC Nashville, Mario Van Peebles looked at me. He said, "Man, there ain't many of us around here." Mm-hmm. My brother, keep doing what you're doing. And this is where it happens. He was telling me behind the scenes is where it happens. Don't be so stuck on being in front of the camera, which is, I'll lead you into one of my, um, I know later on we talked about, you know, hurdles. That's what That was one of the hurdles for me, um, going to conflict of um, wanting to be in front of the camera, mm-hmm. but always being pushed behind the camera because of my ideas and my creativity. Mm-hmm. And so... Um, I'll get to that point later, I guess. But he said, you know, just continue to focus on what you're doing and continue to create. I didn't know what it meant at the time. Um, but, you know, um, that's kind of my take as far as like, I've been around the block when it comes to major productions. Um, I haven't been on too too many small productions. Everything like, it's been like ABC, yeah. USAA, movies, did some stuff with Jamie Foxx. You know, I met a lot of lot of people. The Tupac, one of the most prideful yep. things I've done is the Tupac biopic. Yep. You know, meeting his mother. You know, meeting mm-hmm. all the guys from Outlaws and hearing the stories of Tupac. You know, the feeling and the, and the vibe in the room. You know, uh, meeting the Black Panthers. Mm-hmm. You know, that actually went through that storyline with Tupac's mother. Yep. You know, and and them telling us the stories on what happened that day. So. Um, this has also played a, a very uh, valuable um, influence on me as a person, just, you know, going through things. Because in film, you can be anything you want. One day you can be a janitor, one day you can be a police, one day you can yeah. be a doctor, one day you can be a lawyer. And, you know, us from where we're from, we live and we dream of things like this. Mm-hmm. We dream like this is impossible for us, yeah. you know, to be doing this. So uh, I'm very blessed, man, and I share that and try to influence it and and feed that back to the community, you know, my community, Tarboro, you know what I'm Mm -hmm. saying? So um, I'm very humble in that, you know what I mean? Yeah, nah, for sure. I had um, a friend of mine who actually went to college with me, um, his name is Bunny Bristow, and he's been, you know, kind of the same. He was just saying the same, like how he's just been able to bounce around in different roles. Like he said, you just can really be whatever you want to be, you know what I mean, in that space. And, uh, he just kind of got started and just like having a look back in the sense of, you know, just being able to to be able to be in front of the camera and behind the camera in a sense too. So he's kind of started doing like some short film that I saw you were also mm-hmm. doing as well. Yeah. So he's kind of, that's kind of how he's getting his producing and writing started in that stage. But really what you said that was big, I just think just thought about it, like even from a life perspective of being in front of the camera, like physically, but even literally, like a lot of people want to be, you know, in front of the face of things, not knowing like, 
behind the scenes is really where it's at a lot of times from a creativity standpoint, from a financial standpoint, a lot of times, like, you know, people don't really, you know, see that as much. And right. now I always use sports as a prime example. Somebody opened my eyes to that, you know, people knew me from football or whatever, college, but people talking about wanting to be the athletes or the star on the team, it was like, there's somebody paying them, you know that, right? Like there's a yeah. person or people paying them to make, right. you know, three and four, 500 million. So imagine what they have to give, you know what I mean? If they can right. give people that and imagine what their work really is, you know what I mean? To be paid Absolutely. something that's, you know, limited in the space of financial gain in a sense, you know what I mean? Right. So it's crazy to think about it, but I always just, that's just me, like my mentality, how I see stuff like, you know what I mean? It's, it's not all about the camera. And I've always been right. that person, I think too, from, uh, just like a way of life, you know what I mean? I'm not the person right. you can see that's flashy out and about all the time, you know what I mean? But I'm enjoying life, but I'm a, you know what I'm saying? Do a lot of things from behind the scenes, like, you know, this is an instance, you know what I mean? And I take care of things. So I just had to kind of hone in on what you said, but that's big yeah. that you that you had the opportunity to do that. Um, and I asked the same question uh, to a friend, like I said, my friend of mine, but what do you think has been more rewarding for you in the sense of being in front of the camera acting or behind doing producing and you know consulting and writing you know from that space uh just just the most rewarding thing is the the final product man um mm -hmm. when you see what it does and believe it or not these things the role play or the art of it, it influence people daily lives so um, when you attach yourself to yourself to something positive or when you attach, just attach yourself to something that might be um you know, a little bit dicey or, you know, controversial, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. And, and, and just seeing the response and how it influenced people has been the most rewarding thing. You know, I'm not, I'm like, like you said, I'm not about no glitz, no glory. I'm in it. And I, and I tell a lot of folks that I work with now, are you in it for the fame or are you in it for the art? Yeah. You know what I'm saying? It's like, love. what are you in it for? It's yeah. the love. It's the passion. I have yeah. a passion when I do this stuff, you know? And so it's, it, it allows me to, uh, really hone in and try to be the best that I can be in, in doing it. I'm not caught up into anything other than that. Yeah, that's that's a lot of what people getting caught up with right now. Like, you know, financial gains. And I get it, especially coming from those, you know, small towns. Like, we came from, you know, it's, right. I'm just trying to get a way out. You know what I mean? But make it easy on yourself. Just find what you love to do. Focus on that. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And, and the, the gains going to come. Like, the finances going to come. You know what there I'm saying? Go. And then you can yeah. create other opportunities for yourself. And other people, yeah. you know what I'm saying, as that comes. So yeah. I don't think really a lot of people have really gained that yet. But if you speak to any successful leader, like they're gonna tell you, any businessmen or entrepreneurs, whoever or whatever industry they're in, they're gonna tell you, like, you know, I just had a love for it. I wasn't really looking for the the glory from it. I just did what I love and I just wanted a shot. You know what I'm saying? Like a lot of times people just yeah. want that opportunity to do it. Um, so that that's really what it what it boils down to. And I know you spoke about Jamie Foxx, and I gotta ask, you know. How was it with Jamie Foxx? I feel like he's one of the most underrated uh, people in general from a talent standpoint, um, music to to singing, comedy, to acting. I think I feel like he's one of the most underrated, but just kind of how was your experience with him? And I mean, even Tyler Perry, of course, you know, he's legendary. So how has those, some of those interactions been with those, with those greats? Well, I'll say, um, so Jamie Foxx is a very, he's, Great, great dude, man. We had a lot of fun uh, working, you know, on set during that, during the movie we shot. Um, ball of energy, and I agree, you know, he's underrated. He's not, they're not giving him, you know, the just do. I think you put him in a category now with Brad Pitt. I mean, just what, two years ago, we was at the uh, SAG Awards, and Jamie lost to, I think it was one of Pitt's movies. And so, um, you know, you Brad Pitt walk in the room and everybody's going crazy over Brad Pitt. I took a right. picture with him, but right. you know, um, it's, it's respect. I mean, yeah, that from the art, you know, of Jamie Foxx, you know, and the things he's done, his 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 range, you know, mm -hmm. um, that it, it's just the fact that again, in everything plays, you know, the demographics. Mm -hmm. It's it's just one of them things, and even more so, and everything we do, it's always going to be that little bit of discrimination or, mm -hmm. you know, us not getting ahead because of that. You know what I'm saying? That's why the Black Lives Matter movement is so important, you Huge. know, because even in film, if you look at, you, if you look, the reason why a lot of black actors and black, black uh, talent struggle is because when you look at a casting, the casting is not designed for us. 
Mm-hmm. It's typically designed for a Caucasian male. And then you look at support and roles. They're designed for whomever, right? Everybody else get that. Yep. So a lot of times these actors are competing with everybody, you know, so a lot of roles are not designed. So that's why you see, that's why I never understood. One thing I just asked myself, why do we got to have BT? You know, why do we have to have BT? Mm. Why do we, why it ain't got like white entertainment television? Right, right. Why do we have to have black <laughs> entertainment? But I understand because that's why we're able to get as far as we get because if we don't, nobody will. will. Yeah, Oprah's fact. doing a lot of work on black mm-hmm. entertainment and black mm-hmm. talent right now too. Yep. And so it's very important that, um, and those are, those are all some of the reasons why Jamie Foxx haven't elevated to the highest potential. You know, in our eyes, he's, he's you know, he's a star, man, yeah. of course. But in in Hollywood, it what matters is Hollywood. Mm-hmm. And so Oscar level discussions, you know, yep, which yep. I think he got some. But, you know, it's, that's just the way it is. And, you know, uh, Monique, she wasn't wrong. You know, I don't yeah. like what she did and who she attacked. Right. I think she should attack somebody else, but she was <laughs> writing some of the pieces of the story. Right. Yeah. And so, yeah, you can find yourself blackballed very easily in, in this game. Yeah. Cause for they sure. know who you are, regardless, regardless mm-hmm. how small you are or how big you are, the streets talk. Yeah. That's a fact. That, and that's, that's yeah. really what, like I said, part of what this platform is, man, like really giving, you know, uh, an insight into what people lives and their journeys are like as being black. I don't think really people understand the complexity that we gotta go through, like the restrictions, like it's so much. And and like for me, like being in the tech industry, like we have to be like five times better than someone of, you know, white descent automatically. Right. You know what I mean? Because yeah. of who we are, you know what I mean? And what we look like, you know what I mean? And, and right. it's like, like you said, why I gotta do all of that? Why I gotta, why I gotta do so yeah. much, you know what I'm saying? Why I gotta be a part of this uh, black tech group to get recognized or get be seen, you know what I'm saying? Like it's, it's right. why, why I take all of that. But like you said, we we created a platform and that's really what I wanted to do from a podcast standpoint of, you know, locals um, that I've known, or just not even locals, the people in my personal network that I've known mm-hmm. or just know of, you know, even other people that I haven't connected with yet. You know what I mean? So just give an insight on that journey, man, or what it's like, cause you have conversations with white people, some of them, and it's like, they have no idea what it's like to be black. They just are just so confused. You know what I mean? And right. a lot of times it's, it's genuine. A lot of times I think it's just playing that role of, oh, I don't really know, you know, right. what's going on. But they know, they just act like they don't see it. Like, I hate the phrase of, I don't see color. For you right. to bring up color, that means you saw color. You know see what I mean? Like, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, well, you know, it is what it is, man. Um, so yeah, so just from that perspective, like you said, just seeing those greats of of, of you know people just of, of black descent, just all of colored people, um, I could imagine what some of your obstacles have been, you know, getting roles and and kind of getting that light. But personally, for you, what has been you know your biggest obstacle that you had to overcome? Yeah, so um, like I was talking earlier, I think I dived a little bit into it. One of my biggest obstacles was like you know deciding, you know. Now I'm here, right? Mm-hmm. Where do I want to take this? You know, um, I was talking to someone uh, uh, a couple days ago, and it's like, man, I can't get a role to save my life. How do I get a role? How do I, you know, do this? And it's, it's like, you know, trying to land in front of that screen is it's a, it's a tricky, tricky game, right? Mm-hmm. And so uh, one of my biggest obstacles is I did it. I've done it, you know, and, uh, and then, you know, but I keep getting pushed to the back. Mm. And so it was a point, and I was telling Gerald Kelly this, a comedian, and he wanted to work with somebody else, another guy who was producing, you know, a guy who wants to be an actor and he does interviews, all the, he does auditions all the time. And I'm like, Gerald, you know, um, he's going, he's, he's caught in a triangle, you know? Mm. And, and so like me, I was caught in a triangle where I'm trying to be an actor, I keep getting pushed to the back. Well, that was a str- that was my struggle, and it, it was a point where I said, you know what, the camera's always gonna be there. I gotta listen to God first of all. Yep. God is pushing me here. God has got me here. God is getting me paid through this. You know, I gotta listen to God. And so I, I was like, I'm behind the camera. I'm I'm a producer. I'm a I'm a I'm a director. I'm a consultant. You know, and I had to really swallow that because you know, being from Tarboro. 
We want to do that. We dream about that. Yeah. You know, we don't want to be behind the camera. We want to be in front of the camera, yeah, yeah. you know? And so, you know, um, just going through that man, that battle uh, led me to one of my biggest blessings was my own production company. Mm. You know, I got, I got my own production company. I got my own television network, you know? And, and um, imagine if I hadn't listened to God and I kept pursuing being in front of the camera, yeah, yeah. you know, I got A-list talent signed under my company, mm. you know? And so, Imagine again if I had not listened to God and kept trying to be in front of the camera, I wouldn't be where I'm at right now. Yeah, yeah. I'll be a struggling actor, you know what I'm yeah, saying? Yeah. You know, instead, I'm a paid producer. Yeah. You know, and so you you gotta, you gotta, you gotta, I tell anybody, if you are challenged, if you are being challenged with something, just listen to your gut, listen to your heart, you know, listen to God, you know, talk to God about it and then make a decision and stick with it, you know. But that's been my biggest hurdle, man, throughout this all um, military. I've done it. I accomplish it. I put yeah. the flag on the wall. I still stand up for the Pledge of Allegiance and all that good stuff, right? But, you know, this has been my afterlife. That was one of my biggest struggles is, yeah. okay, so, so what now? You know, with, with in regards to what I'm trying to pursue my passion, which is film and television or television film, you know? Um, so uh, that's that was one of my hurdles, man. And I, I made a decision to be behind the camera. No, for sure, man. That's 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 a blessing. That's a big time blessing, man. And congratulations to you, you know, on your production you. company, um, your TV network, man. I, I'll definitely be, you know, like you say, anybody from back home, I'm, I'm supporting regardless of if I know you, if I don't, if you're close or not, you know what I mean? It's, just all, it's automatic support for me. So definitely I'll be de uh, checking that out. But um, yeah, that, that's big to, to kind of say, like you said, to, to, to listen to God. And for me, that's one of my favorite scriptures, you know what I'm saying? Lean out to your own understanding. But, yeah. you know, listen to God, man, he, yeah. he, he going he gonna to take care of you, man. You know what I mean? And, and I've had to go through that. You know, I think we've all had that, you know, what now type of, right. you know, some road that kind of split. You're just like, man, what I'm going to do, man. You know what I mean? Like, where, where am I going now? And, you know, like you said, just to kind of listen to God, just see how I take you as a blessing to see, you know, you listening and then seeing the results from it too, you know, seeing the blessings yeah. on the back end from it. So, like I said, congratulations for that, man. And, uh, like I said, I always ask people, you know, words of wisdom, man. You kind of already gave some, you know what I mean? It's just, you know, just listen to God and, and stick to it, you know, once he speak, you know what I mean? And, and right. go with that flow. Um, what what other things, I guess, you know, if someone wants to get into acting and producing, you know, what what things can they do to help themselves? Like you said, you know, a lot of times you know, we want that blessing, but we have to start too. We have to start somewhere. So what's kind of yeah. things, you know, for people that kind of want to get started, you know, what type of advice or suggestions would you give them? Yeah, if you're trying to get in the film, first suggestion I would tell you is to make a decision if that's really what you want to do. Because um, I'll tell you, I've been in the military and being in the army, you get up for like, you know, my younger days, I, I actually retired as an officer. So my younger days, you get up early in the morning, you work off, you go to work till like, you know, five, whatever. Yeah. But in film, you're up at three o'clock in the morning and you're home at eight, nine o'clock in the evening. And so really decide if you really want to do that because people don't understand it's a lot of work involved. And mm -hmm. if you want to be in front of the camera, take it seriously, you know, um, get a coach, get an agent mm -hmm. um, and start working. Uh, and, and, and today with Instagram, TikTok and all these other social media platforms, you can yep. create your own buzz. You don't have to no longer wait for somebody to say, hey, come in the door, we'll take you. You create your own space. Yeah. You know, they'll recognize it and they'll go after you. Trust me. If they see a dollar signs, they're going to chase it. Yeah. And so uh, just just stick to it. Trust in God. Jump, the, jump off the cliff. Yeah. Jump off the cliff. And that's in anything you do. Yeah. Um, don't well, hold back. Just take, take, that jump. take that leap of faith. Yeah. Take that leap of faith and jump, yeah. you know, and because if you got the faith and you got the work ethic, you're going to be successful. That's just the bottom line. Yeah, man, that's some good advice right there. And that, like you said, that's not even just for film, really, in anything. You know, if this is what you want to do, like we said, going back to passion, really, is this really what your love and your passion is? If it's not, it's going gonna, it's gonna, it's gonna to hurt you real bad, real quick. You know what I mean? You, you yeah, can really it feel. Will reflect. Yeah, for yeah. sure. You know, in your work, you know, and in, in your personality and your character and your life, it, it's going gonna, it's gonna to hinder everything at that point. But yeah, I mentioned Steve Harvey. Um, if anybody listening haven't seen that or heard that clip that he, he talks about, y'all yeah. was talking about taking that jump. 
Oh yeah, that's, man. That's one of my favorite stories you always tell. Uh, you know what I mean? Like at the end of the day, basically the story you ever heard it just basically saying how, you know, you, you gotta take that jump off that cliff. You know, you're not gonna soar automatically. You know, you're gonna get some bumps and bruises when you first jump, but yeah, after a while, you know, you're gonna start to fly. You know what I mean? And, and once you start yeah. to fly, man, it, it's gonna be one of the best feelings you ever had in your life. So you definitely gotta take that shot. You definitely gotta jump, you know what I mean? And, and just see what God take you from there. Yeah, I'll, I'll just add one more thing to that, man. Um, find some motivation too, people, get some mm -hmm. motivation. I get up, like you said, Steve Harvey, I'm up at six o'clock in the morning mm -hmm. just to hear that, man, mm -hmm. that intro. You know, and then before my kids get their day started, man, I always ask my kids, Barack Obama did it back then, you know, when he was running. And he always said, are you fired up? And the crowd said, I'm fired up. And I be ask my kids, are you ready to go? And, I, and they say, I'm ready to go. You know, I pep them up and get them ready for the day. So ask yourself, find some motivation. Use a motivational tool. To mm -hmm. Use that as your starting point. Each day, even if you got a special quote you got on your mirror when you walk in the bathroom, get something to charge you for that day to get you mm -hmm. on your on your way and drive. So that's that's another little tip. Yes, sir. That's, that's a great one. When I was driving to work, like you said, I was listening to Steve Harvey. I got notes on my mirror. I, I got multiple things of motivation, yeah. you know what I mean? Getting up, like I said, that time in the morning and working out, that was another thing, you know what I mean? What I want to look like, my fitness goals, right. my health goals, um, you know, outside of that, like my personal life, like, you know, career, everything. It's, it's, I got motivation for each one, you know what I'm saying? And, and that's, that's yeah. what keep me going. So like you said, man, that's, that's some great advice, but um, I definitely appreciate you for having you on, man. And uh, definitely look out for, for big things you got coming up, anything you want to mention you have coming up to, to people to look out for and, um, you know, where they can find you, any type of socials and, you know, contact info. Yeah, so I'm on all social media platforms, Life of D. Worsley on Instagram, Twitter, um, and that's in Facebook. Um, but, um, yeah, so I do have, um, last year we shot a comedy special in Atlanta with Gerald Kelly and his three sons. So we got a, we got a special that's dropping um, within the next month or so, uh, you know, the, uh, the Kelly's comedy special, My Three Sons. And then following that, we're going to, um, we're st I'm creating right now in the process of creating a sitcom for um, that that spinoff. Um, Gerald Kelly is a comedian. He has three okay. sons. Only comedian that has three sons that that are comics too. Mm -hmm. And so they, um, I'm working with them now on doing a sitcom. And we shot a special. The special is going to be re released um, pay per view, and then it's going to go over to Netflix on the Netflix catalog. But um, I'll be announcing that on, on social media platforms and through, you know, commercial ad space. But that's some of the things that's, that's my most nearest and dearest thing to my heart right now is, is that, you know, as well as um, got a special wine that's, that's, that's dropping. I, I um, became an ambassador for this company in France. Um, they have this, this very uh, unique wine. And one of the unique aspects of that wine is that bottle is actually 24 karat gold. Wow. And so, um, okay. just working that project. So those are some of my nearest, dearest projects that I got going on right now. And yeah, no, for sure, man, we definitely gonna be checking that out. And um, yeah, I always got for that wine as well, man. My, my girlfriend's got me in the wine, you know what I mean? Tasting it, you know, just trying and really learning my palate. So I'll definitely be on the lookout for that. Check some of it out too, man. Okay. But yeah, thanks again, man. I appreciate you having you on and, um, you know, best wish to everything you got going on, man. Much success. Uh, continue, you know, doing what you do. You know, it's a lot of people looking up to you, man, and we appreciate everything you've done so far. All right, man. Appreciate you having me on, brother. Yes, sir. No problem. All right, have a good one. All right. One. One. Yes, sir.